Hi, I'm Dr. Amy Huff and I teach nursing here at Columbia State Community College. And I'm here with one of my nursing faculty colleagues, Ms. Deanna Womble. Hi. And today we're gonna to give you some information about the nursing program and the admission process that we have to get into the program. We're so glad that you're here. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and we hope that you find it informative. I would like to start off just by talking to you a little bit about Columbia State's nursing program. We offer a very quality program uh, that is approved by the Tennessee Board of Nursing. And then it's also accredited by the uh, Accreditation Commission for Education and Nursing. And so these organizations accredit nursing programs so that you know that it's a quality education that you're getting and that they approve of the education that you're getting. And when you complete that education, you um, are able to sit for the NCLEX exam, which is a licensure exam that allows you to practice as a registered nurse. And we're very proud of our pass rate. In 2019, we have 100% pass rate, and that's, that's in taking the NCLEX the first time. So that's really a, a big accomplishment for our students, and we're very proud of them for doing that. Uh, our data is not completely back on 2020 yet. Uh, we still have some students that are taking the exam, but it's looking great as well. And so we're very proud of our students and that success rate on passing the NCLEX. We do have a competitive entry uh, into the program and we'll go into a little more detail on that and what all that entails. There are also two different campuses that make up the nursing program, the Columbia uh, campus and the Williamson campus. And the nursing uh, students are split between each of those campuses. So all of your courses will either be on the Columbia campus or they will be on the Williamson campus. You'll be, uh, you'll be assigned to one of those campuses for the, for the uh, program. The, with those two different campuses, the program is the same with each campus. So it doesn't matter which campus you're at and we work together as a team, the faculty on each of those campuses work together to give you quality nursing education. And in working together, we do have a mission statement and this can be also found in the nursing handbook, which is online at the Columbia State uh, website. But our mission statement is in accordance with the mission statement of the college, uh, the mission is to serve humanity by providing a basic nursing education program, which prepares graduate nurses to be compassionate, professional and self-motivated critical thinkers who are able to assess their own strengths and weaknesses and who gain the respect and support of their communities as successful registered nurses. And in carrying out this mission, the faculty continually strive to practice what is taught. So this mission statement is, is woven throughout the nursing program. And we're very proud of our mission statement and we work very hard to uphold that mission statement as faculty. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about the program and what all it entails. It is a very intensive program. You see this diagram here has the nursing program in the center and then there are different, um, different parts of that program or different spokes on the wheel, so to speak. So you have your general education courses and those are courses that can be taken either prior to coming into the nursing program or once you're in the nursing program. And then the aspects of the nursing program itself involve your nursing classes. So this is lecture when you are in, in a class actually getting your lecture content. And then there's also out of class experiences which involve clinical experiences where you go to different facilities. And then there are also lab experiences which take place on the campuses as well. And depending on which semester you are in, the lab and the clinical component will take up different amounts of time depending on, depending on where you are in the program. Now with that being said, with all these different facets, there are, it does require a big time commitment being in the nursing program. We like to say that you, when you're in the nursing program, kind of consider that as your full-time job because it really does take up that much time as far as studying and also your commitment to being either on campus or in clinical. So you have to look at all the different aspects of your life, whether, um, whether you're working, your family commitments, um, any other commitments you may have, um, and decide if you have that time commitment to put into the nursing program. Because again, it does take a lot of time, time to do that. Just a brief talk about the actual program of study. So currently right now you have 
a major that is not nursing. Um, once you are accepted to the nursing program, then you will become a nursing major and your course of study will change to this AAS in nursing. Most of you are probably in like uh, pre-allied health right now um, with, a, with a nursing focus. And that will change again once you get into the nursing program itself. Now, this course of study may look a little bit different. You'll notice that there are some general education courses along with your nursing courses. So the nursing courses are designated by the NRSG. And then all the other courses that you see um, are your general education courses. These are courses that can, the general education courses can be done prior to coming into the nursing program, or they can be done along with your nursing courses. And you just have to take into account what's gonna work best for you and talk to your advisor about that. Some people are able to take all their gen ed courses along with nursing, but because of the time commitment with nursing, it may be preferable that you take those courses ahead of time. But it is designed where you can complete the program in four semesters. You do not have to have any prerequisites. You can come straight into the nursing program. Um, and that's what this particular um, program of study outlines here. Um, you must make a C or higher in all of your science and math courses. So that's important to know if you're getting those prerequisites um, out of the way prior to coming into the nursing program. And so Dr. Huff is going to talk to you about admission requirements to get into the program. Thank you, Ms. Womble. Um, I just wanted to mention too, a question I get frequently from students once they get into the nursing program is, can they take more nursing classes per semester? And you can't, they're designed to build upon one another. So all of the nursing courses, once you begin the program, they can't be taken earlier than the semester in which they fall. All right, so the big question, how do you get into the nursing program? As Ms. Womble said, it is a competitive process. The very first step is being admitted to the college. So you do have to be enrolled at Columbia State Community College. You have to be admitted as a student here. There are two minimum requirements that you need to think about that will make you eligible to apply to the nursing program. And that is your GPA and your ACT score. Your GPA must be at least 2.75. And that's for all college level work. That includes all college classes that you've had at Columbia State, also any college level classes that you've had at any other schools. It does not take into consideration any learning support classes. We don't calculate those. The classes do have to be at a college level, but we do calculate based on all college level classes, not just the ones that are required for our program. Now, if you're just beginning your, your college journey, maybe you don't yet have 12 credit hours in college yet, that's okay. We'll look at your high school GPA in that case. If you'd like to calculate your GPA yourself, and Ms. Womble, if you'll remind me at the end of this as well, I'll go to the advising page through columbiastate.edu. There is a GPA calculator there where you can enter your course hours and grades, and it can calculate up your GPA for you. Okay, but you at least have to have a 2.75 GPA, and you have to have at least a 19 or higher on your composite ACT score or the equivalent. And I say the equivalent because maybe you took the SAT. That's fine. You don't have to retake the ACT. We have a conversion table for the SAT. You have to make greater than 900. Another way that you could equate to a composite ACT score of 19 is if you've completed all of your learning support classes or if you have taken a college level English and math course. All of those, the SAT, completing the learning support or completing a college level English or math, we count those as equal to a composite ACT of 19. 
Some people choose to retake the ACT, even if they make that minimum level, however, because to be eligible to apply, you have to have 19. But once you meet these two minimum requirements to apply, then we have a ranking system based on points and you can earn points through your ACT. So as Ms. Womble referred to, there aren't any college level prerequisite classes that are required to get into the nursing program. Of course, you'd have to have learning support completed, but um, all of those general education courses, you're not required to complete all of those first. However, taking certain of those classes can increase your points because you get points with your ACT score, but you also get points based on the grades that you make in ANP1, ANP2, microbiology, and general psychology. Please remember, if you do take ANP1 and 2 before you get into the program, they have to be completed no more than five years prior to program entry. If they're older than five years, you will have to retake them. So once you meet the minimum requirements, the GPA and the ACT, then you're assigned points. You can get up to a maximum of 28 points, up to 15 based on your ACT score, up to four based on what you made in ANP1, and up to three points each for ANP2, microbiology, and general psychology. This scoring criteria is available on our nursing website and we will pull that up and share it with you at the end of this presentation as well. So you can pull it up and take a look for yourself, but you can see how if um, you have a 19 ACT composite, that's worth one point. But if you choose to retake the ACT or if you did very well the first time you took it, you can get up to 15 points for that. The ANP1, that the points allowed for that class depends on the grade that you made and how many times you've taken it. For ANP2, microbiology and general psychology, we use your most recent grade to assign points there. So when do you need to apply to the nursing program? If you're following the traditional track, that is if you're not already an LPN, we take applications twice per year because we admit each semester. We accept applications in August to start in the spring and we accept applications in February to start in the fall. I encourage you to talk to your advisor to make an academic plan that's going to work best for you. Some people, um, based on any number of reasons, want to try to get into the program very early and take very heavy course loads and apply to the program early. Other people choose to um, go part time, maybe taking a class or two of the general education courses, and they're going to delay applying. It's very individualized. It's whatever works for you. So make sure that you're talking to your advisor about this. Now, if you are an LPN, there is a separate LPN to RN bridge option that we have that has different admission and entry requirements associated with it. So please be sure to talk to your advisor or contact the nursing department and see the information on our nurse website about the LPN to RN bridge option. There are some links that we're going to point out to you here in just a bit. I encourage you to take some time, look at the nursing website, read through all of that information, especially looking at the admission requirements and the admission procedures. Because of the, the coronavirus pandemic, our admission procedures are a little bit different now. We're doing more things electronically. So the most up-to-date information will be on the web page. Make sure you're checking in with that as you get ready to submit your application. 
As we've said before, make sure you talk to your advisor. If you're not sure who your advisor happens to be, you can find out by going to My Charger Net or Navigate, and there are links on columbiastate.edu's homepage. You can go to either one of those places and find out who your academic advisor is. You can go to the nursing website. There's so much good information there for you, including a link to frequently asked questions. If you have a question, probably someone has asked it before. So that's a great place to go. And finally, you can contact the Health Sciences Department by emailing us at healthsciences at columbiastate.edu, or you can call 931-540-2599 or 2600. Someone will be glad to help you out. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing that presentation, and I'm gonna bring up Columbia State's homepage. So this is columbiastate.edu. There's a few different ways you can get to the nursing homepage from here. What I usually do is I hover over academics, go down to divisions and click on health sciences. And when you scroll down, there's a link that will take you to the nursing homepage. And all of that information that I talked to you about is contained on this page and in all of these links. Here is the link to the procedures and the requirements, the scoring criteria, the frequently asked questions. You can find the program of study here. Lots of good information. If you happen to be an LPN, here is the link to the LPN to RN bridge option. All right. And I think I promised to show you where the GPA calculator lives too. Okay. My favorite way of getting there is to use the A to Z directory. That's so very handy. And I'm going to use this to go to the advising homepage. Scroll about halfway down and there's the link to a GPA calculator right there. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Womble. Thank you very much for sharing your information with us. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Huff. That was very informative.